Hello everyone, welcome to the Painting with Commentary with GMA Tank for Episode 7 for Arborgast. So, this particular mini did a lot of base work, starting with some milliput. Great stuff. It's a two-piece epoxy, you mix them together uh, for quite a bit, maybe five minutes or so, and then you can start to apply it with your fingers, as I am doing here. Make sure you keep your fingers nice and moist and it will not stick to you. It doesn't, I don't believe I've heard or seen it or read that it's toxic, so still wash your hands when you're done, but you can use all kinds of stuff. So as you can see, I'm filling out this base. I've got the idea that the tree ant goes in the center. I started by measuring him out, so I knew where I was working and without him on there, because I was gonna paint him first. Um, and I'm gonna build up the front area, because my idea is I need a shelf for that toxic drum to sit on and a river stream to pollute in front of the shelf. So I'm building it up right now. And um, again, using my finger to nice and smoothly keep all that stuff spread out. And there's the channel that I'm starting for the stream. I use Milliput a few times now. I like it, it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, you can keep it in a Ziploc bag and it'll stay good for years. And again, it only activates when you mix it together, so it's a pretty good sound investment. So I'm using my tool here to just scrape out the actual channel that I'm going to have. Build up that a little bit more. It's kind of it's hard to see from the top down. I put my tree in on there just to make sure he fits, which he does. Um, again, smooth out that. Now when that stuff dries, it's like cement. So if there's a little bit you don't like, make sure it's fixed before it cures or else you're never going to get rid of it. That means whether it's on the side of the base or on the mini itself, just be careful when you're using it. I've also read that you can put the milliput in the freezer and it'll retain its state of curation for a while. So if I had to go real quick, I could put that in the freezer and then pick it up again later after it warms up, pick it up exactly where it left off. So again, I'm cleaning off the areas where the treant's going to go so it doesn't make any testing my barrel placement good and I'm scuffing it up a bit because let's be honest that's supposed to be a rock in nature rock doesn't have um, smooth edges I'm putting a little channel there off from the main stream because again when there's a rock there's usually a crevice in the channel so the stream's gonna run down there <clears throat> I'm cleaning up the side of the base and um, as you can see just marking it up so when I dry brush it later, it'll just look a little more rock-like. So now once this dries, I let it dry for 12 hours, and I'm gonna use Chaos Black uh, in the spray can to prime this base. Uh, you can see I'm just finishing up those details. And here it comes. Now Skeleton Horde, now that it's primed, I'm filling in the river with Skeleton Horde um, contrast paint. See how black that, uh, how brown that looks? That's great. It's going to dry on the black, as you can see, it did. Um, and now it's got like kind of muddy look to it. And it's transparent, so some of the black is shining through. So Dawnstone paint now for this, <clears throat> excuse me, for this uh, stone. Dawnstone's a great color to use. It's a really good base stone. And I'm taking my time, and oops, I hit the edge. And I wipe it off because, yeah, you can always paint over it later, but uh, let's, you know, not do that if we can. Uh, a little bit more Dawnstone. What else am I doing here now? Uh, Armageddon Dust. Yes, one of the first two technical paints. I'm using this for like the sandy shore and the edging of that creek. Armageddon Dust, it's got that cool sandy look to it and it dries with a nice texture, some like sandy grit in there which is microplastic, so you don't want to use this with a good brush. Notice I tape my brush with like a, a piece of tape in the middle. Um, that designates this as my technical brush, one of the two that I have, so I don't accidentally try and use this to paint because the bristles are all messed up. And we don't want that. So again, that's, the, that's basically my shoreline of my creek. Notice I didn't do it in front of the rock because it's supposed to be deeper at that edge. And Sterling Mud, same idea. It's got the technical grit in it. And that's going to be for the rest of the, the earth, um, which you can just paint brown. But if you have access to the technical paint, it's good. It puts that texture in there and really looks like sand. I put the treant on there and do his base at the same time, knowing that he's going to eventually be glued into place. As you can see, I've also started painting him at this stage. But when I do these 
painting with commentary videos, I like to, to keep them in order. So base, and then props, and then models. So Sterling Mud, glob it on there. It doesn't dry and crackle or anything cool. I'll put a little on top to represent some mud on there. Um, a little down the side, touch, 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 just like that. This doesn't dry or crack or do anything cool effects. It just dries and looks like dirt. I'm gonna touch up the rest of his base. And I think I use some of that dunes in front as well in this second here, if I remember correctly, yeah. So back to the dunes, and I see I spread it over, try and fill that crack just to make it look like the beach, so to speak. Okay, so now we're, it looks like a little more Dawnstone to clean it up. Okay, and what do we have now? Some dry brushing of Sylvanath Bark. This is like a dirt, so dry out for the mud, gives it some deck texture because the mud has a texture. I let that paint dry for at least an hour before I do this to it because of the plastic beads inside. This just looks now like dirt and mud blended together. White glue tasty. We don't be eating white glue. I get some rocks from the garden, from the path, from the stone, whatever. I wanted to put one in the center of the stream. Some Longbeard Gray dry brushed onto the rock face to make that really look like a nice limestone shelf, which is what I wanted. And my outside rock gets a treatment too. I know it's a different color and I could have also painted it the same Dawnstone Gray to match, but I don't mind that they're different colors. Another round of Skeleton Horde, as you can see, this time on top of the Armageddon Dunes. This is the second coat I've put in the river, but now with the Armageddon Dunes there, it's going to look like a little bit of water or creek. Now remember, everyone likes to paint water blue, 99% of the times, water is not blue. It's blue in the ocean when there's lots of it, but in creeks, anywhere where it's not very deep, you can see the bottom and that's what you see. Or there's mud and sediment in the water. So as you can see, I kind of go up the side of the uh, edge there over the sand. I go up the side of the Dawnstone uh, wall. Just to, because again, when I pour the liquid water in later, it's gonna look like water and I want it to appear and give the illusion that it's a deep crevice. Now here's the barrel making video part. So I measure out quarter inch and I slit, 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 slit just one side of the cardboard. Cut them into one inch strips and then put, um, I roll them against the grain. Cut out some circles and you can see, well, I'll explain as I paint them because this is a little fast. So I've glued them together Mornfang brown is the color. You can see how the slitting the one side of the cardboard and then when I rolled it against the slits, the slits make it look like wood panels. The discs that I paint uh, cut in the circles, I stuffed inside there and glued it into place. Again, it's all done with hot glue. And again, this is just a strip of um, Bristol board that I painted to look like Iron Warriors. Now I've painted, um, now I'm just adding some glue. I used a ruler to press down on the cardboard to leave that little indentation, which would be a guide for the band. So now I glue the band in place, cut it to shape, stick it on there, and let it dry. Now the barrel looks pristine right now, a nice Mornfang brown, so I'm going to use a dry brush on it to scuff it up, make it look a little bit less. I probably should have done this without the band on there, I think I realized that, whoopsie, I was just really excited to do this. So a little bit of bullfag brown just to get the dry brushing on, make it look a little more um, natural wood. And I have another band to go on. Again, pre-roll it, add the glue. This time I'm putting the glue right on the band. <laughs> Wrap it around the barrel and hold till it dries. Okay, now an Agrax Earthshade on the whole thing be sloppy it's okay it's supposed to be a barrel I've also painted the top of the disc white that's gonna be the foundation for the ooze instead of the cardboard it's basically that prime so now here's putting in some hot glue hot mess okay and the reason is I'm gonna let that harden and put a little more and a little more I'm trying to make that look of a drip which I was able to achieve now this is called typhus corrosion it's a technical paint you paint it on any type of metal and it dries looking like rust so my glue is hardened, so now I'm priming the glue with some uh, whatever white. Again, I like the idea that maybe the ooze is kind of seeping through the cracks in the barrel. So I use some ceramite white and I paint where I want the ooze to be coming out of. Anywhere that's white is going to be oozy. I bent, painted onto the straps, whatever. So the two colors that I'm using, um, one's Warpstone Glow, which is the darker of the two, and this is Moot Green I started with here actually. 
As you can see, I'm using moot green, which is going to be the next color that comes up. And it's still wet, the white paint in there, that's okay. And then I add the other color. I did those reversed. Haha, <laughs> bug. So warpstone glow on top of the moot green now. And then I, since it's all wet, I'm spiraling it to try and get like a, a look. I'm not trying to blend the colors. I'm trying to have some dry brush strokes in there to look like it's swirling around multiple colors. I'm also going to add some yellow to that ooze later. So let's paint the tree in now. So I start with the warpstone green again in all the recesses of the tree. Warpstone glow. Wherever the deepest recess is, I'm putting in this warpstone glow. Then I'm going to put a moot green on top of it to get the kind of radiated effect. I'm only putting it on the front of him because in this case he's standing in front of the pollution. My son had a brilliant idea, who's eight, he's Evan, and he said, you know, it, they kind of look like vines, they look like moss and vines, and I was like, well, dang, he's right, it does. Should have maybe done the pollution or the, the corru corruption purple or red or something, because I'd already committed by that point, I just added yellow to the mix to make definite sense, yellow and orange, so clearly is yellow, orange, and green, it's not natural. So again, Anywhere he's touching the drums or close to the drums, he's going to have this warpstone glow paint. Um, again, the beard, and you'll see, once he's all painted, he's going to look quite foresty, like vines and moss. But I hope by adding the yellow and the orange, we dissuaded people from thinking that was the case. Okay, so now under the moot green, the eyes. Now this model has really cool, like a 69 shape to his eyes, where that one goes down. See how it's like a tear, and the other one goes up. And I thought that was a kind of cool thing. And later I'm going to paint those yellow instead of the moot green that I have right now. But for now, I got that nice base green. I'm adding the moot green to be like a layer of um, contrast with the other green. And when they both dry, they kind of give this cool like plague effect. And that's what we like for this particular guy. Okay, and... Yeah, just pretty much more of the same. These big models are pretty forgiving in that they, you know, to, we're not painting for museums or tournaments here. We're painting for show and for story. And uh, putting that on there gives it a real cool two-tone green look. I like it. This guy was more fun to paint than the white dragon, but, uh, you know, he was still kind of boring. A lot of the fun for me in this um, painting came from the, the base itself and decorating it with all the pieces of nature that I was able to go out and find. So again, I'm keeping the back pristine. I wanted it to look like a tree from the back and something wrong from the front. It also kind of symbolizes the dual nature of uh, Arborgast, that he is, you know, the one version of Arborgast is, uh, is a treant for good and the other is the corrupted version. So now a Steel Legion drab, that's the paint from Citadel, water it down and gently apply it to the model. I say water it down because you don't want it too thick to fl like flood in and clog those cracks. I'm going to paint over all the green I just did gently so that hopefully the paint goes and stays on top of the levels of, um, of wood, not down in the recesses. It's not so watery that it drips inside. It's watery enough that I can paint over it though without... See, watch as I paint over this green. See? There's still green showing, almost like broken skin. Again, I don't want to push too hard. I don't want to cover that with green. Otherwise, what did I bother starting with the green for in the first place? You just painted them brown. So as I continued this process, you got this tree with cracks. Inside the cracks, you can visually see the corruption and the pollution that's inside him, the blight, as it were. In this case, the plague, Corian's plague. If you didn't see the video for the episode of the story about uh, Arborgast, you should check it out. Um, there's a link in the description below. And But if you're just here to talk with me and um, go over the painting, well then enjoy. I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks for checking out the channel. I appreciate it. Leave a comment below if you have any preferences of what you'd like to see painted or if you have any questions. I know I kind of rushed through the barrel part of that, but um, everything you need to do is in there. There's no specific... I didn't have specific measurements for the barrels. Just kind of play with it. Get some cardboard. Everyone's got Amazon boxes lying around these days. Get some cardboard and just go at it and see what happens. I went through like 12 barrels before I was happy with the ones I had. 
Okay, so I'm better at holding it in front of the camera, but obviously I'm getting a little drunk here. Getting a little down, but you can see how this is working. And uh, all these tufts of tree and on his face, his nose. Again, don't hit his eyes, don't lose his beard. All right, what are we on now? Oh, a nice wash. So this is an Agrax Earth Shades. This is a bath. This isn't a wash, it's a bath. If I had a tank of this shit, I would just dump, dunk him in there and pull him out because I, I wasn't necessarily sticking it down into the green. I covered his beard, of course. I wasn't worried about getting it down inside his beard because I didn't want um, to mute those colors. Those greens stick out. I don't want to put so much contrast or so much uh, shade on it that they get nerfed and, and darked and shadowed because then they won't be as contrasty. Now the whole project turned out to be contrasty with the bark and then the, the the leaves and everything, but for now, yeah. So now we have some brown, whatever, or is it this gold fag brown again? It's a dry brush. Again, uh, sylvaneth bark. Interesting, it dries very similar to the uh, Steel Legion drab that I base coated with. So I'm really, I bathed it. You can see it got darker. Now I'm lighting it up again in certain spots to look like it did before. And I'm just going around the edges various places it's a tree folks this isn't some kind of model that's gonna you, know, you don't have to worry about the lighting and where direction it's coming from because trees are all kinds of different colors for all kinds of different reasons so just give her some dimension that's all anywhere where there's cracks and vines and holes by dry brushing just accentuates those and you're winning so on top of the hands Again, see it from the back, he looks like a tree with a little a bit of the green showing through and his ass and everything. From the front, he heavily looks like a tree. Now Goldfake Brown now getting dry brushed on the back. This is like an orangey looking brown. Quite different than the, tr the tree brown I was using and that's what I wanted because again, like I said, from the back, he should look like a tree. And I think this really helped by adding that other layer of brown. It really makes him look more natural from the back then from the front and orange and green are good colors on the color scale they kind of oppose one another so it's a it's a cool contrast I like it but to each their own and if you want to make this guy purple and yellow be my guest I'd love to see a picture of it in the comments below okay so where are we at now we're gonna do this and just so you guys know I'm literally watching the video alongside you just talking over it I don't have any kind of fancy technique or script to follow here if, you ever wondered I know there's not plenty and that many of you watch this but for those that do I'm putting the extra effort in for your sake now another dry brush this is niblet green and this is just to go over those splash parts Now some areas on this beard some of the areas the shade did get inside and I have to brighten them up green again maybe on the edges to imply a little bit of a glow not tons of this stuff but you know with all that wash it did mute a lot of some of the predominant green. So I'm just putting a dry brush on to just reinforce it, that's all. In his mouth, which is gonna eventually turn yellow. But again, just staying on the front. I don't wanna put any of that stuff on the back side. When you see it from the back, you should look like a tree. Okay. Mm, yeah, I guess I do his crown. That gets colored over again later in yellow. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, yes, flash glitch yellow or flash gets yellow right now. I think I'm doing moot green in this video I'm coming back over it later <clears throat> with the yellow again This is about where my son saw it and said yeah, it's cool. It's all mossy and I'm like yeah, that's not moss bro That's corruption. He's like looks like moss dad, and I'm like hmm time to bring out the yellow <laughs> Here it comes see the difference as soon as you threw that yellow in there. It looks like taint. It's awesome but, and I think I was ag adding some Agrat's Earth Shade there <clears throat> to the yellow because, of course, yellow is yellow! And that's a little too loud. So muted a bit. You can see the top of his head there. I've got the yellow as the spiral. His eyes are now yellow. His mouth is yellow. And just enough. Not everywhere. Let the green be. Add some yellow. So we're going to finish up this base now that he's pretty much done other than his tweaking. So we're going to add the grass. Let's so put the tree back on there. Let's see where we're at. I just put glue in the various area and I use a broken brush that I trim the bristles off to spread it out to where I want the grass. And here we go. 
I guess I could have made this part a little shorter. I'm sorry. So, come here often? Yeah, Cubs got a good team this year. Yeah, they're going to go all the way. <laughs> small dog is small. All right. So, almost done the white glue tasty. That's where I want all of my grass. It's a lot of grass. That's okay. It's a forest. I don't want much brown showing. And trust me, the grass is going to flake off a little and the brown underneath is going to show. So don't think it's a waste to have put all that sterling mud on there. Now, battlefield grass. Here we go. Anywhere there's glue, it's going to get a douse. Put it on that lid. I just weigh out my weed. Just like that. Wherever you can put it. And obviously you got to get all this grassing done before you do the water. I didn't make that mistake, but I'm sure someone will. Get all your base of the stream. It still looks like a dry stream bed. Battlefield step. This is a different type of grass that I have. It looks more like a moss. So I put it in various areas up his leg a little bit in some spots. Um, I glue on a couple more rocks anywhere. I want there to be that other color of grass and woodland tuff that's coming soon. First, it's going to be the moss grass. So again, spread out some of those glue piles, go up his leg a bit, flatten them up. I have a bunch of different tufts on this. I got woodland tufts, jungle tufts, lowland shrubs. Okay, so here's the moss, see? So I'm breaking it up, putting it on that glue. The woodland tufts and the lowland shrubs are coming next. And I don't put tons of the basing in the video because, you know what, you don't need to follow a tutorial to base. You can look at the finished product and see exactly what I did. I'm gluing on little rocks here with tweezers, see? Individual rocks placed on individual little stucks of glue. Jungle tuft is a different color of tuft. Those are the three tufts that I use though in case you see my finished product and wonder. Now this stuff, that shrubbery, now this is what I'm putting on his branches. One piece per branch. No sense. I've seen some see summer undergrowth. I've seen some people clump big shit on this this guy. He looks like a piece of broccoli. No, no. One piece per branch. See, I glued one piece on that one branch. When it's done, there it is. Now here's this liquid water. It's called realistic water from Woodland Scenic. Great stuff. See, I've masking taped off the edge of the model's base. And I'm pouring this in here in real time, not time lapse, so you can see just how viscous this stuff is. It rolls. It just goes. It's gonna go all the way to the edge to my tape. Just wait, see it's still creeping. I'm gonna add a little more, and again, you'll watch it creep. I did two layers of this. You need 12 hours in between layer for it to dry and cure. And when it does, it will be nice and tacky. You don't wanna to touch it and leave fingerprints. Just let this go. It's gonna creep everywhere. So I hope you've built up enough. Let it roll. It's gonna dry perfectly clear. Then I glue my barrels on and I can add the pollution to the top of the water. That's what I was going for. To share a couple pictures with you now of the finished model and the finished base so you can see it but that realistic water kind of made this project for me i enjoyed using it thanks a lot to my buddy josh who lent me the bottle because it's 50 bucks a bottle i'm probably going to get one though because i can see myself using this again in the future um, but again don't touch it for 12 hours and don't be putting grass and stuff on now or it's going to get in the water and stick and once it's in there it's in there forever and if you touch the surface right now while it's trying to cure you're going to leave wreck you're going to wreck make good gouges and wounds it dries at about an eighth of an inch thick per layer so i did two layers on mine but you could do more um, but i think it has a maximum before it starts to not dry so you know, you're not going to be making resin models of oceanscapes so anyways there you go here's some more pictures again thank you very much for watching me and hopefully you watch this all the way through when i kept your attention i'm gma tank i appreciate your time um if you have any questions for me, feel free to throw them down in the comments below. Check out a couple more of these pictures up top, different angles of the finished scenery. Remember, a lot of woodsy scenery is easily found for free outside, in your garden, in your yard, uh, down a trail. Find I got some bull rushes in there, which were the tops of real world bull rushes. Um, a lot of hot glue with those tufts and hide lots of stuff. You can hot glue things on and instantly set and then use the tufts to hide the glue. It's a great idea. Anyways, this is GMA Tank signing off. I appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.